guys, welcome back to my channel. I am super excited to introduce you guys to these cute little chicks um, that are very new. I just got them and I let you guess over on Instagram what they were and a few of you did get it right. They are peacocks. But before we get started in today's video, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below so that you never miss out on all of these awesome little animals. So this is <laughs> Indigo and Gemini and Gemini are peafowl so that's actually the name of the species it's called peafowl and peacocks are male peafowl so a lot of times you'll hear me using the word um, peacocks because that's what people are more familiar with and sometimes people get confused when you tell them peafowl they think it's like a different type of bird um, but yeah it's all, um, it's all peafowl peacocks are the boys we don't know yet if indigo and Gemini are males or females, if they're peacocks or peahens, um, because it's uh, very difficult to tell, you know, when they're this young. Basically, you wait till they get older and start having more feathers and showing, um, you know, if they're boys or girls. Peacocks and peahens are very different, so it is actually very easy to tell which ones are boys and girls once they do get older. But at this age, um, who knows? I guess you guys can take a guess in the comments. So as many of you know, uh, we have a lot of peacocks that are free range around the farm. They live here and they don't have to live in cages and stuff like that. They're actually all free range. And so this is their breeding season. Well, actually kind of the end of their breeding season. Um, July is uh, later towards the month is when all the tail feathers will start falling off. And so that will be the end of their breeding season and the tails, the big beautiful peacock tails, are uh, going to be coming off because that is what they use for mating to attract a female. So they lose all of those feathers once a year. And right about this time the chicks are all hatching and that basically signifies the end of their breeding season. So Friday um, we found... Uh, oh, indigo, this one. We found indigo on Friday um, in the morning, basically running around trying to follow the other hens. Um, they had all hatched out chicks right about the same time, so you couldn't really tell which one he belonged to. Uh, but unfortunately, none of them wanted to take him. They were all rejecting him and chasing him away. It was actually really sad. Are you hungry? Come here. Um, so we took him in and I decided that I would just raise him. And sometimes one of the things about um, a chick being rejected is there might be something wrong with him. So I did anticipate that he could pass away from something that was um, natural but unexplained, something you couldn't really see. However, he has been eating and drinking and crying and pooping and just doing everything very normal. So I don't think he actually has any health conditions um, that we wouldn't be able to see. Um, but I have noticed that I feel like one of his wings is dropped a little bit lower than the other one. And I'm not sure yet if that's just going to be something that goes away or if there is some sort of deformity there. But if there is, it is very small, almost insignificant. And they really, um, that's really not a big deal for them. He would be able to live just fine if there was something wrong with one of his wings. So that's not an issue. And he is very vocal, let me tell you. This little guy is just constantly making noise. Uh, so he seems really healthy, really happy. Um, his mood actually changed quite a lot once we got him in and ta started taking care of him. And they just want to belong. They, you know, want acceptance. So it was really cute to see him feeling better. So then on Sunday, uh, Sunday morning, we actually found Gemini. And Gemini had gotten separated from his mom and had ended up in the water. So we weren't able to put him back with his family. And we decided to bring him in with Indigo and raise them together. Uh, which actually worked out really well. I was really happy to actually have another chick um, with. Um, indigo because these are very social animals and they're doing really well together. There's about um, I'd say probably like a 48 hour difference between them which is very common within uh, their own little hatching group so they pretty much could be siblings. 
and they get along really well and it's easier for me to put them down because they're more comfortable being with each other. So if I need to do something and I have to put them, um, you know, into the little crate or something, it's better now that there's both of them, they don't stress out as much when it was just one chick by itself. Now also don't worry that they're on the table. Um, I do wash them so that they don't fall off, but honestly, in worst case scenario, these birds do fall off. Um, this height is not an issue for these birds. Where their nest would be, they would actually be falling a bigger distance than this, and they would encounter heights like this all the time. That's completely natural and what they're um, meant to to be exposed to. So there's really not an issue with animals like this falling. Um, they have not fallen off this table, um, but they've jumped off chairs and stuff and it's just, just part of what they do. <laughs> so one thing about chicks that have just hatched is they don't know how to eat by themselves. You have to actually teach them how to eat. And this just includes like pushing the food around with my finger, picking it up and offering it to them. See, he got interested. Oh, see, yeah. They love that. They love to, to be shown that the food is in your hands. Like, oh, yep, look, see, I got some food. Oh, you like that, huh? And that's basically just teaching them that this is food and for them to start eating on by themselves. And so it'll take a little while for them to just go to the food bowl and eat by themselves. Um, they kind of prefer for me to be there helping them. Now, Indigo loves broccoli, and since I had already had him two days before, Gemini, I had been teaching him how to eat, and he gets really excited over broccoli, so he's made uh, Gemini get really excited over food, and it's been a lot easier to teach Gemini how to eat because now there's competition. It's not just one chick trying to figure out what's food. Now, he picks up a broccoli, and he's really excited about it, which makes Gemini um, competitive and wanting to get to it first and run off with it. So it's actually really cute. Hey. And so since Gemini is a little bit younger, he has to try to be quicker because he's still trying to, to figure out um, what the food is and he doesn't want somebody else to be getting all the food and him to not, you know, get food and go hungry. Of course, they're all going to get enough to eat, but in the wild, he'd have to really be fighting for his food. So having two chicks has made them a lot easier to feed and get them to eat. When it was just indigo, he was a good eater, but sometimes um, he wasn't quite paying attention to it because he didn't feel the need to constantly be trying to go after the food. <laughs> See, they like the broccoli. Huh, time to go. Do you like broccoli? <laughs> so then we're still working on water. Indigo's been a little bit better. You can see at the beginning of the video, he was actually drinking by himself. Gemini's still trying to kind of figure out what's going on here. Come on, you thirsty? And again, it's showing them that, yeah, that's water there. And it's kind of funny because at first, Indigo would bite at the water until he figured out that he needed to slurp it. Um, and then Gemini is still a little confused about it, but we're getting there. Uh, two, I add a lot of water to their food. That way it's easier for me to pick up and it also helps them stay a little bit more hydrated. Indigo's so funny because he sleeps really weird. <laughs> See, now they're after the same piece of broccoli. The competitiveness when they have to... <laughs> when they have to compete for food. Uh, so he's, um, Indigo sleeps really funny. Uh, it's just, I've thought more than once that he died because he goes on his side and he stretches out his little feet and throws his head backwards. And he honestly looks like when one of these little birds passes away, the way that the body's just kind of like thrown out to the side. And so, <laughs> I was like, oh no, but um, he's been fine. He just sleeps very weird. Um, I'm starting to get used to it. Uh, Gemini sleeps a little bit more normal. And then Indigo, when he's really tired, it's, it's really funny because I've actually been able to like move his head completely and he doesn't wake up. He just stays asleep and I just kind of move his head 
you know, back onto to my lap or something if his neck like falls off the side. So he's so funny. He's really cute. He has a lot of personality and Gemini is just <laughs> starting to get used to, to being around humans and stuff. And um, Indigo took it really, really well. Like he was just meant to be a bird around humans and Gemini has had to learn a little bit more, but he's getting used to it and I think they both seem really happy. And then Indigo's very, very vocal. Literally the only time he's quiet is uh, when he's asleep. Uh, he cries for everything. Like, uh, Gemini makes a normal amount of noise. Um, Indigo cries when he's tired, when he's hungry, when he's cold, when he's fussy, when he wants to play. Like, just very, very vocal, constantly letting me know that he needs something. And as you can see, they do like to play. Um, usually after they've been eating for a little while, they'll want to run around and spread out their wings and jump around. It's just so adorable to watch. And then after that, they'll get a little sleepy and want to take a nap. But usually right after they've eaten, they want to really jump around a little bit. And if I had these chicks in a brooder, um, they would have food 24-7, of course. It would always be available to them. I don't have these birds in a cage. I'm not keeping them in a cage. So... I just take a break about every two hours to feed them and give them some food and let them play. And then after that, they kind of go back to having a nap. Since it was just one peacock to start off with, um, I felt bad leaving him in a cage because he was very lonely. They are very social. And he wanted my constant attention. So um, I actually set up a cage for him to sleep in with a heat lamp. But that wasn't going to work out for him because he was just... Um, crying about it and any time that he'd be put down he was sad so I decided to just um, get a heating pad out and I put it over my lap and put him to sleep in my lap while I watched Netflix in bed and then once he was really sound asleep I moved him into a little box next to uh, my bed on my nightstand and let him sleep there and so he hasn't been in a cage uh, really at all I do have a crate that I carry around for when I have to do something else and I need to put him down. But basically I just carry the crate around with me. Uh, I take it outside. Right now outside it's like 100 degrees which is perfect for them because they need the heat. So I put them in the little crate next to where I'm working and um, let them see me and then take them back out when I'm done. And as for Gemini, since um, you know he recently came into the picture too, I just decided to do the same thing with them have both of them there did you fall off the bowl uh so i've been putting both of them to sleep in a little box next to my bed and they've been doing really good like that um on the heating pad they get really warm and they just go to sleep and they'll sleep actually the whole night they wake up like around 6 a.m and want some food so i actually uh you know give them some food and then we go back to sleep for a few hours Thank you guys so much for watching my video about Indigo and Gemini. I hope you enjoyed meeting them. I did also do a video all about peacocks and their care. So I'll link that down below in the description as well as one of my videos of a peacock chick hatching from an egg. So that's really fun stuff. Be sure to check that out. But if you want to know more about these chicks or you have questions, please let me know and I will probably do more videos about them. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter and I'm probably going to be doing a You Now live stream soon. Uh, since I've been on vacation, I haven't been doing uh, streams for a while, but be sure to go find me on you now so that you don't miss my live stream. <laughs> Thanks, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!